Wow, how do you like that? <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Camarillo United Methodist Church. We are glad to be joining together in worship this morning. That harpsichord, by the way, uh, was donated by um, Margaret Girolamo's sister, Carol, uh, Carol, Kip, 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 what was her last name? Kyrgyz, um, K-I-R-G-I-S. And so, um, but it was a, um, a bequeath to, uh, to the church. And so we were, uh, they asked if we wanted, um, we wanted a harpsichord. And we're like, well, I don't know about that. And I asked, I sent an email to, to Mark. I sent an email to Luby. And immediately they both jumped on it and said, yes! <laughs> so now we, we have a harpsichord, a piano, and an organ. And I'm just waiting for a dueling, you know, keyboard, whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to see that? There you go, Mark, Dory. <laughs> All right, wherever Luby is. All right. Well, again, welcome. We're glad to be joining together in worship um, on this uh, Sunday after Easter. It is after a fabulous uh, worship service last week. It's always a, a, a wonder. It's like, who's going to come to church on the Sunday after Easter? But this is what I call the, 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 the good and faithful servants. There you go. As always, uh, please take a moment to fill out the connection card in the back of the bulletin. Um, and again, <laughs> as a regular tender, just write your name and have that por portion torn off and have it ready to put into the offering plate. Uh, greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who are joining us online, we invite you to go to our church website at camarilloumc.org and fill out the online connection card, letting us know that you're joining, in, joining us in worship this morning. And also download the worship bulletin so you can follow along in the, in the worship service. If you're new to our church this morning, uh, we extend a special welcome to you and uh, again, invite you to visit our church website to learn more about uh, the ministries of the church and the various programs. This is a very active church. There's a lot going on, more than sometimes I can keep up with. So uh, just know that there, is, there are programs and events that I'm sure will, um, will interest you. Um, in your bulletin, you should have received a, uh, the newest brochure. Um, I know it still says spring 2023. It should say late spring. But the, 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 all the classes are for... Uh, uh, up, upcoming classes, uh, starting from this week, well, um, Eileen's class started last week, but uh, this week going all the way through to the summer, summer months. And so um, take note of that and uh, peruse through it. And so if there's any uh, class that interests you, we invite you to come and participate. Uh, it is part of our Christian discipline to continue to grow in our faith and engage in study. So uh, we're glad to have that. A couple of classes that are starting this week. Um, Dr. Bill Garlington will be leading a four-part class on the various theologies and rituals around death. Such an exciting topic. Uh, but it's very appropriate considering we just celebrated resurrection, right? So there's no, no fear of death. And so um, you can uh, um, participate in that. That's on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 in the Mission House. And then on Wednesday morning, uh, Eileen continues her class on aging, Now I'm Wise. This is part two. There are handouts for this class that are available on the website for you to download. And then on Wednesday afternoon, Dr. Bill leads another class on the indigenous religions. Uh, this is a Zoom class, and so the link to this class is on the church website. Just look for a, a picture that looks like that and just click on it, and it'll take you to the Zoom link. Um, Again, that class is on Wednesday afternoons at 3 o'clock. And lastly, if you're interested in membership, uh, becoming an official member of this church, uh, there will be an orientation next week um, after worship service. Uh, for those who are interested, um, we invite you to come. And, and for those who already attended one of these orientations but have um, uh, waited uh, wanting to uh, officially be part of the membership, we'll be receiving members in a couple of weeks. So just please uh, just let me know. All right? And we are always grateful for the gift of altar flowers, and today we have several arrangements. Um, first of all, the, the, uh, one of the, uh, um, the arrangements up on the altar, uh, the first one is in uh, um, celebration of Susan and Dean Rothgarn's 21st wedding anniversary. Yay! 
Congratulations to Dean and, um, uh, Dean and Susan. Uh, may God continue to bless you with many years of joy, peace, and happiness. And the second arrangement is also an anniversary celebration for, for Nita Arsano and John Crotcher, which who are sitting all the way in the back. They always make sure that they have an eye on all of you. <laughs> so congratulations to you as well, and may continue to bless you with many years of joy and happiness. Um, and then we do have two other arrangements, and these uh, white flowers are from yesterday's uh, celebration of life uh, for um, Roger Cox. Uh, we had a wonderful um, memorial service, remembering him and all the ways that he's definitely been a member of and con contributed to the ministries of this church. So uh, we give thanks to God for Roger and all the ways that he has touched us. With that, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able and turn your attention to our liturgist, Paul Kistler, who will lead us in the call to worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. And our souls. Do not worry or fear, for Christ is alive. In this place we find hope and joy. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Let us bring new life. Please join in singing our opening hymn, The Easter Song. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing, but we can be born again. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing, Christ is risen from the dead. He Good morning. Good morning. Well, how are you this morning? Good, Good morning. The, last week was a fabulous week, wasn't it? Good morning, Letty. Yes. What did we have last week? A lot of candy. Oh, a lot of candy from Easter. I see there's still that, that, that sugar high that continued on to this week, right? And I still see the Easter bunny ears, right? So, so this season of Easter is going to last us for a while, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's a wonderful season because we get to celebrate that, that God is with us and, and Christ is alive and, and Jesus is alive and Jesus is with us all the time. So last week, after um, I had a um, well, after our wonderful worship service, um, I kind of wrote this on, on the newsletter, but I, I wanted to share with you. So last week, I decided, oh, you know what? After a wonderful Easter service, I can rest a little bit. And then I decided to uh, wash my car and made it really nice and clean and shiny. Exactly. And then as soon as I washed the car and drove out, guess what happened? A bird flew by. And this was a big bird that ate something really bad. And so guess what happened? It went all over the car and I was like, no! Why, God, why? You think it was God's fault? No. No, it's not? You sure? No. But didn't God make the birds? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so shouldn't it be God's fault? No. No? You sure? No. Was it my fault? No. Uh, kind of. Kind of. You, you think? You think? Because you just got it. Out. It's the bird. It could have. No, no, it's actually nobody's fault. It's nobody's <laughs> fault. Nobody the fault. The bird didn't mean to do it. The bird was just flying by. It didn't see the car. Well, maybe he saw something shiny underneath. The car didn't see the car. The car <laughs> he just saw something else. And he was just flying. Oh, wow. So it sure wasn't my fault? Because if, if I didn't wash the car, then, then it wouldn't have pooped on my car, right? Exactly. It, exactly. Because it would have. It could have. It could have. It could have. Then you could have got it washed. Oh, I see. I could have 
waited until I pooped in my car first and then washed the car. That's hard to plan. <laughs> right? Okay, okay. Well, the other day, um, before Easter, you know, I was working up here and I was moving things around. I was getting ready for a big Easter season. And do you remember, we used to have this big round table here. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it's kind of in, in, in the shop right now, getting big. <laughs> because the other week I was cleaning this place up and, and organizing it, and I picked that thing up, and then I was trying to move it over there, and then, well, I saved it, sort of, but I ended up having to fall on my knees on that. Yeah. Now, was that my fault? <laughs> Wait, who think it was my fault? <laughs> you sure it wasn't God's fault? Because this is God's home, God's sanctuary, and I was trying to clean up for God. Sure it wasn't God's fault? No. No? Yes, it is God's fault. I meant the opposite. You meant the opposite. It's kind of hard to figure out whose fault any of this is, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, sometimes we go through life, and there's things that happen all the time. Sometimes it could be my fault. Sometimes... It could be a bird's fault. It could be anyone's fault. But, you know, it doesn't really make any difference, does it? When, when, th when bad things happen to us, do you want to go and always try to blame someone for it? No. No? What should we do when something bad happens? Forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. I like that. Who do we forgive, though? Do we forgive God? But it wasn't God's fault, right? Or was it? Forgive the bird? Yes. Yeah. Okay, forgive the bird. Okay, sure. The, bad, the bird ate something bad, so I'm sure the bird was having a bad day like I was. <laughs> and forgive myself for trying to do something like carry that table by myself? Yeah. 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 Am I forgiven? Yeah. It's, it, it's, at, it's at the shop right now, so I'll see if... It, <laughs> after he comes back. But you're right. You know, sometimes it's not worth blaming someone for bad things that happen. Sometimes they just happen. But what we can do is pray to God, saying thank you that I'm still able to walk, that I was able to wash the car again, right? And no matter how, what bad things happen, the sun will still come up the next day. Will the sun ever stop coming up the next day? Yes, it could. Yes, it could. Long time from now, but not in our lifetime. Right. The sun will still come up. The sun will still set. We'll have morning, and we will have evening. And all of that, God provides for us. Amen? All right. So let's put our hands together. And I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Thank you, God. For the wonderful day you give us. For the beautiful sunshine outside. And the warmth of the, the people in the, in the church. And all that you are for us. We thank you for your love that always watches over us. And no matter what we do, you will always love us. And nothing can ever separate us from the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. With that, I'm going to invite you to go with Ms. Dory to Sunday School. Show. 
to a time in our service uh, as we come to a time of prayer. We lift up prayers for our congregation and the world around us. So uh, let us join together in a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. O God of grace and of love, we give you thanks, O God, for this season of Easter as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we look back on the past week, we recall the joy and the celebration of Easter and the hope of resurrection that sustains our faith. On this day, as we continue in this season, O oh God, remind us of your constant care and your constant nurture in helping us grow. We know, O oh God, that life can be difficult at times. There are hurts all around us. Life is full of disappointments, hardships, and loss. Remind us of the need to hold each other accountable in faith as we receive your gift of grace and love. We pray, O oh God, for strength and wisdom for all those who struggle this day, for those in need of comfort, for basic necessities of life, for dignity, and for health. We ask that your healing presence be upon all of us. Heal our broken hearts and heal the world around us. We particularly lift up prayers for Martha Cox and the family as we celebrated Roger's life yesterday. May your strength and peace surround them as they process their grief and loss. May they hold fast to your promise of resurrection and eternal life. We lift up prayers for Jerry Olson as he recovers from his uh, outpatient surgery on Friday. May he regain his strength and in, his rug, in, in his recovery. We continue to lift up prayers for Mark Rogers as he adjusts to his new medication. Grant him strength and healing as, you, as your healing presence guide his progress. And we pray for David and, and Jackie Kaiser as they seek to regain their strength and health. Lord, may your spirit give them hope and encouragement of recovery. May they know of the care and the prayers of this congregation. And we lift up prayers for Tim Brock as he recovers from his recent infection. Help his body to regain its strength in preparation for his surgery next week. In all these ways, O oh God, we lean upon you and we seek your, your spirit to grant us and guide us in all of life. May your healing hands be upon all of us in bringing us, bringing wholeness, wholeness to, to our souls. Lord, there are other prayers that we hold in our hearts. Hear them as we lift them up to you in silence. O God of grace and of peace, we give you thanks, O God, for all that you are and all that you provide. Help us to be the church in action to all those in need. Equip us and empower us for your work of ministry. We pray all this in the name of the risen Christ, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we continue in our worship service, uh, we want to uh, celebrate some of the ministries. Um, we have a fabulous event today. Uh, our annual youth dinner and auction uh, is this evening. 
Now, you all know that each year our youth engages in, in major, um, a major event um, during the summer every year, whether it be going on a mission trip uh, with SSP, uh, Sierra Services Project, or next year uh, going on this pilgrimage to England um, to learn more about their faith, our faith, and to be grounded in their spirituality, especially in our Methodist heritage. And that's what all this is about. And so we, I, I hope that you come and you're able to support the ministry of our youth um, and our hope of deepening their faith and providing that, that firm foundation uh, so that they have that faith before graduating from high school. If you are not able to attend uh, this evening, uh, I invite you to perhaps consider making a straight donation to our youth ministry so that we can continue to support in raising our youth. With that, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. Uh, we are always grateful for the many programs of this church, and especially during this Easter season, uh, and the opportunities to grow and to engage in our spiritual walk. And so with hearts of gratitude, I invite us to give of our tithes, gifts, and our offering.
join in praying together the prayer of dedication found in your bulletin. Holy One, we give you thanks and praise for your promise of new life. We thank you for these gifts. As we offer them into your hands, may they bring hope and new life to those in need. In the name of the resurrected Christ, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 18 to 28. The Apostle Paul writes that despite the hardships of life, God leads us that all things work together for good. Paul writes, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own, not of its own will, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope because the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning and travailed together until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of God's word. Amen. Please join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks as we come together at this time to reflect upon the passage that we have just heard, as well as reflect upon uh, some of these things that, we, that, 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 that are part of our, 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 our Christian language. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be upon us, guide us and lead us in this time of worship. May your Spirit fill this place and fill our hearts, and may the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of our mouth be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. Have you noticed that, well, life can, all, can be full of challenges, isn't that right? There's a story about a woman uh, named Jill who had, uh, had, had a car that, that wasn't quite reliable, put it that way. You know, she often would have to call her friend Jack. Yes, I know Jack and Jill. But uh, she often called her friend Jack uh, for a ride every time her car would break down, you know, or, or somewhat uh, had some issues. Well, one day Jack got yet another one of his calls, those calls, and he asked, ah, what happened this time? And Jill said, my brakes went out. Can you come and get me? And Jack asked, where are you? And Jill responded, I'm in the drugstore. And Jack, Jack asked, and, and where's the car? And she said, it's in here with me. <laughs> well, that's life, right? Someone once said, sometimes you're a bug, and other times you're a windshield. And life has a way of bringing the two of you together. Not quite sure what he meant by that, but I think we all know. Sometimes these challenges are routine, everyday stuff, you know, that, that just irritate us, you know, like, like, um, like, like a car breaking down or you're running late uh, or, you know, you wash your car and having a bird fly over. These, you know, these kind of events just drive us crazy. But in a way, you can also just kind of think of, think of them as bad luck. On the other hand, there are other challenges in life that's more heart-wrenching, a death of a loved one, 
or an ominous diagnosis from a doctor's visit, a loss of a job, or a breakup in the family. So how do we go about explaining why some of those things happen? You know, in our passage today, Paul writes, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that, that God has a hand in everything that happens in our lives? And if so, then do all, all things, is God responsible for all things, including the bad things? All the bad things in life, are those part of God's design? That's a question that we have to ask, right? There's that phrase, well, it's a theme for today, everything happens for a reason. How many of you have said those words? Oh, come on. I'm sure many of us have said those words. So some are saying, nope, I will never say those words. Good. Well, a lot of times people say those words, uh, say, you know, everything, ha everything happens for a reason when we're trying to console someone after they've experienced something bad, right? Either uh, whether it be a light incident or a heavy incident, those words are, are used to kind of be uh, consoling words. There's other phrases like, just have faith and everything will work out. Or when God closes a door, he opens a window. So you, you guys know some of these, right? Or another door, whatever. <laughs> but what do they mean by that? What do we mean by these phrases? And are they true? For the next several weeks, we're actually going to be looking at several of these common Christian cliches. Phrases that I'm sure that we've all used at some point, especially when we didn't know what else to say? Sometimes you're in those situations, and what do you say? And some of these cliches just kind of come out. But are they really helpful? And are they theologically grounded? That's what we want to look at. Several years ago, there was a, t uh, a TV show called um, Early Edition. How many of you guys remember that? It's about 10, year 10 years ago. Early Edition. Um, it it's about a man. Uh, by the name of Gary Hobson, who mysteriously receives a newspaper, uh, the, the Chicago Sun-Times, every morning that's delivered by a cat. Now, the thing that's really mysterious is that not the fact that it was delivered by a cat, but uh, the thing is that the newspaper is for the next day. Ooh, yeah, I know, intriguing. Now you get, like, is it on Netflix? Um, but it's a show about uh, um, this, this man, Gary Hobson, that uh, receives this newspaper every morning, and it's for the next day. And in the newspaper contains stories, events, a lot of them tragedies, that will happen within the next 24 hours. And so the plot of the story, of course, is that this man um, is a show about this man trying to figure out how to prevent the tragedy that will happen. Well, in one particular episode, the newspaper, um, I think it's the second episode, the, the newspaper um, has in the headlines, 150 die as plane crashes on takeoff. But at the bottom of that paper, there was a small, tiny story about a little girl hit by a car who dies in the street waiting for the ambulance. Well, in that story, Gary Hobson decides to help the 150, since, you know, it's 150, um, who would die in the plane crash rather than uh, the, the one little girl. And so he drives, in the show, he drives, uh, he's frantically driving to the airport to stop the plane from takeoff, but he gets stuck in traffic, in heavy traffic. And while he's agonizing his inability to get to the airport, the little girl cycles past him on a nearby street. And so then he decides to, that he better help the girl. And as he veers off the, the highway, reaches the girl just, he reaches her just after uh, she's hit. But he scoops her up, races to the hospital, and because of his actions, she survives because of his timely intervention. But as he sits there, he sits there in the hospital, he feels like he failed because he couldn't get to the airport. He didn't make it to the airport, and he feels like he failed. But just then, the hospital doors open, 
and the girl's parents rush in. And the father is dressed in a pilot's uniform. He, had just pull, he was just pulled from his flight right before takeoff with the news that his, uh, of his daughter's in, uh, accident. And the delay, of course, avoided the airplane tragedy. Cool story, huh? Now, probably you guys are going to be like, well, I wanted to see this show. Yeah, it's like four seasons long, but sure. Um, would it be great? I mean, sure, it's a TV show, but sometimes that's the type of fantasy that we, we, we wish things work out that way, right? Wouldn't it be great if God worked in that type of way, where a plane doesn't crash because a pilot gets diverted uh, because of the daughter's accident that was saved by this one person, right? Maybe that is how God works. A Christian writer, uh, Lindsay Parkhill, says, God brings about the good by weaving together our daily actions, our daily decisions. Well, I wish that was the case. But then, anytime you have these stories of something got, you know, a, a tragedy being diverted, there are also times when it doesn't work out. What about the planes that do crash or the children that get hit by a car? Where is God in those situations, right? Again, does everything happen for a reason? And I'm not talking about simple, you know, cause and effect. Like if you try to carry a heavy table by yourself, you're bound to fall. I get that now. Lesson learned. I'm talking about where is God when bad things happen? Or are, we, are they all part? Is everything part of God's great plan? Barbara Brown Taylor, a Christian writer, I think we read one of his, uh, her books um, in the, uh, the Slow Read class. Um, Barbara Brown Taylor tells about a time when she visited a barrier island where a, a loggerhead turtle was, was laying her eggs. One night, she saw, as the tides came in, she watched as a, a large female turtle crawl up the beach, dig into the sand, and, 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 and create a nest, and, and empty her, her eggs into the sand. The next morning, the next day, Barbara returned to that site to, to see um, where the turtle had, had laid the eggs, but she said that she couldn't find them. But what she did notice was the track, the trail that the mother turtle left behind while leaving. Unfortunately, it was going in the wrong direction. Not towards the waters, but in the opposite direction, which um, was towards the sand dunes. And so Barbara Brown Taylor, she said that she traced the trail and found the turtle way inland, exhausted and almost out of life. So she quickly poured some water on it and then called the park ranger, who came pretty much immediately. He came, he looked at the turtle, he flipped the turtle on its back and then wrapped a tire chain around the two front legs and then hooked the chain to the back of his Jeep. And then he took off at full speed, dragging the turtle behind, behind him. But he drove so fast and the turtle was so limp upside down with the mouth open wide. Barbara, Barbara says that she saw the, 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 the turtle's mouth just being filled with the sand as they were going up and down these sand dunes. When the jeep made it to the beach, the turtle was motionless. But then a large wave comes in, splashes on the turtle. And she lifts her head slightly and then with every wave that came in, that turtle was brought back to life until she was able to crawl her way back into the waters. Watching the turtle slowly swim away and thinking about that, that horrific scene of the turtle being dragged behind that jeep over the sand dunes, Barbara Brown Taylor writes that sometimes it's hard to tell whether you're being, you're being killed or being saved by the hands that turn our world upside down. That's what she wrote. <laughs> it's tempting to think 
that God, like the park ranger, is like the park ranger, where saving, you know, is saving our lives means dragging us through the desert dunes, you know, desert sands. Yeah, I guess the Israelites had to do that, huh? But does that mean that does, does that explain all the tragedies that we face in life? Are the words everything happens for a reason? Is it really valid? It's an appealing theology. For some, it's, it's comforting to believe that everything, you know, including the awful tragedies in life, are all part of God's big plan, and that in the end, everything comes out good, right? God's plan for goodness of the humankind. It's fine, again, if everything works out at the end. But at the same time, it's hard to accept that what happens before the end, it's hard to think that God could cause other trage tragedies such as a death of an innocent child in order to teach a lesson for the greater good. Who would accept that, that, that type of theology, right? We don't. What kind of God would, would do something like that? So what does it mean in our passage then that all things work together for good for those who love God? Are we to throw that passage out then? <laughs> I don't like that. Of course not. But when bad things happen, when tragedies occur, we need to first admit that we live in a natural world with natural laws. Creation works the way it does, and it works pretty well because we have these natural laws that aren't randomly broken. Even though at times we wish they could be, they aren't. You know, you all know that I love superheroes, right? And my favorite is Superman. I, I, I always dream about if I could fly like Superman. But it's one thing if one person, you know, could defy the laws of gravity. But can you imagine what would happen if everyone was flying around? That would be chaotic, right? Talk about car accidents, right? We have a hard enough time driving on two dimensions. God created a world that's wonderful and has laws to keep it wonderful. Things stay on the ground. The sun comes up every morning and sets in the evening. But it also means that there are consequences of keeping things in natural order. Like if someone drives too fast and can't negotiate a turn, what happens? The car will crash. Did God cause that? No, but human stupidity did. And there are other natural laws as well that cause earthquakes and tornadoes, floods and fires. Some tragedies, tra tragedies are caused by human errors. Others are just the natural orders of things. Is God to blame for all that? God doesn't cause tragedies or hardships. But God does nudge us and has a way of bringing about some form of redemption out of any circumstance. Not that God causes those circumstances, but in any circumstance, brings a good out of it. You see, Paul writes, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. For those who love God. Theologian R.C. Sproul noted that Paul didn't say that, you know, God, um, all things work together for good for all those who believe in God, but all those who love God. And there's a clear difference. He says that there's a difference between believing in God and loving God. Because when you love God, you view life differently, and you look at, you look at things differently, and you see how God is working through the tragedies rather than looking to God to blame. A fellow pastor once told about a time when he went to visit a, uh, the parents of a nine-year-old boy, Billy, who died of leukemia. And he said that as he approached the house, he wasn't sure how to answer all the questions that the parents would undoubtedly have. Questions like, if God is a God of love, then why did he allow our son to die? Why didn't God answer our prayers? 
what more could we have done? Why would God give us a beautiful son and take him away so soon? Those are tough questions. And so as he approached the front door, the, the pastor was apprehensive of what to, say, what to say to any of those questions. But as he went to the front door, the door opened, and Billy's father was right there. And he greeted the pastor. And the pastor, all he could say was, I'm terribly sorry. And the father said, thank you, pastor, but don't be. We're sad, of course. But the wife and I are so profoundly grateful that we had Billy for nine years as we did. There weren't questions of why. There wasn't anger. But both mother and father were at a place of peace, trusting in God's grace. The parents not only knew God, but they loved God. And that changed the perspective of the world around them. They didn't believe that God was some cruel being that randomly gave their son leukemia in order to punish them or to test them. They, they, they didn't even think in that direction. They didn't look to God to blame, but instead they gave thanks to God for allowing them to even have a short time with their son. It's a difference in perspective. They had real faith. So does everything happen for a reason? Well, if you're talking about the natural order of cause and effect, then sure, you know, you do one thing, well, something will happen afterwards. But if you're talking about real tragedies, the reason, are we, you know, if we're talking about the reason why bad things happen to good people, and if God is the one that is testing us, or it's all part of God's bigger plan, then I'd say, God doesn't cause hardships in our lives, but God does nudge us so that in every circumstance, God guides us in how we view the situation and how we can respond. And when we approach God with, as a God of love rather than uh, some puppet master that controls everything, then we enter into a relationship with God. And from that relationship, we learn to love God with our, all our heart, soul, and mind. Amen. Amen. With that, I invite us to sing our closing song, Easter People, Raise Your Voices.
receive the benediction. As we go forth, may we go forth with confidence and the strength of the Holy Spirit, knowing that the life that we live, the life that we live is guided and that Christ walks with us. That because Christ lives, that even through the hardship, even through the hardship, may we know that God walks with us, God empowers us, and in all things, God is there to receive us. May we go forth in the strength of the Holy Spirit and in the faith and the trust in God our Savior. Amen.